G'day, I'm Dicko. Welcome to another episode of Aircraft Engineering here at ATS Aero in High Wycombe. Today, we're gonna to talk you through a 50 hour, six month inspection on this beast behind me. It's an XA42 Extreme Air. Let's jump inside, get the engine warm, and I'll talk you through what we're gonna do. I don't think you've got a license. Love my job. <laughs> So here we are inside the beast. As you can see, nice tight fit, just the way we like it. <laughs> we're gonna break this check down into three parts. First part is we're gonna do a check on the engine. We're gonna give the engine a clean bill of health for the next 50 hours. Secondly, we're gonna do a check on the fuselage and the airframe structure and the controls. Third is we're gonna release this beast back to service. Right, let's get it warm so we can get the oil out. She's alive! Okay, checking for oil pressure. Alternator on, oil pressure's good. Fuel pressure's good, temperature's cold. So as you can hear, we've got the engine started. Uh, we're just about to head out to the hold out by the runway. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run the engine up, get the engine nice and warm. That'll allow us to drop the engine oil. And we've got 10 liters of oil we're gonna change. The warmer it is, the quicker it comes out. It just makes our life a bit easier. Copy down, traffic and turning to ATS. See, we're taxiing from side to side because I can't see anything out the front. I haven't even got a license. <laughs> Now she's warm, let's get it inside, get the oil out, and make a start. Enough room. First thing we've got to do before we can get the oil out, is get the cowlings off it. Under here we find the engine sump and the sump plug. To drain the oil, we need to cut the lock wire. The sump plug is lock wired for safety. Remove the plug, drain the oil. Sump, 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 sump. Too many sumps. <laughs> Not roughy. First thing we need to do before we start work on any engine is make the engine safe. The way we do that is by removing all the spark plug caps. That's these bits here. The reason we do it is that if we have a live magneto at the back of the engine and we turn the propeller, the engine can fire. Trust me, you don't want to be hit by one of them. So let's make the engine safe. No. You can tell quite a lot about the condition of the engine by looking at the spark plugs. What we're going to do now is we're going to remove the spark plugs from this six cylinder engine. Each cylinder has two spark plugs, an upper and a lower. First, we're going to remove the uppers and take note of where they came from. This particular engine is numbered cylinders one, two, three, four, five, and six. First, let's take the tops out. Number one. 2005, it's a good vintage. So here we have the 12 spark plugs removed from this engine. Six from the upper spark plug hole and six from the lower spark plug holes. These two being number one cylinder, two and so on. First thing I can tell, or first thing you may notice from these spark plugs is that they're a little bit sooty. The reason they are like that is these engines are notoriously thirsty on fuel. A cruise power setting, this engine will burn about a litre a minute. Now we've not had this engine at very high power settings on the ground during the warm up, so I would expect to see a little bit of soot and a little bit of carbon build up during that short time that we've been running the engine. The second thing I notice is that these spark plugs are all in very good condition. The center electrodes are all still very round. The upper spark plugs, they're slightly more oval. Still well within limits. Next thing to do is get into the workshop, get these plugs cleaned, tested, and ready to go back in. Make sure we've got no issues. Take these to the workshop. This is our spark plug cleaning machine. It cleans and then tests each spark plug for serviceability. Oh shit, I didn't put my safety glasses on. <laughs> Safety's no accident. Baby, Before and after. So what I've just done there is clean the threads. One, to remove the abrasive grit from the cleaning process. And two, so we can put some nice clean anti-seize compound for ease of installation and removal next time. You've seen me clean the plugs. Next part of the process is to test them. This little gizmo simulates the spark plug being in the cylinder. What we do, Connect the electrode, wind up the pressure, check for a spark down in the mirror. What we're looking for, nice, clean, even blue spark. Job's a good one. <laughs> Always the joker. Now that the spark plugs have been cleaned and tested, the next thing we want to check is to make sure that the gap between the electrode and the earth is correct. This is done with a wire tool, and the limits we're looking for are 18 thou to 22 thou. 18 being the minimum and 22 being the maximum. 
Perfect. Now that we've finished cleaning, testing, and gapping the spark plugs, next thing we need to do, lube them up, get them back in, set the torque wrench, torque them up, then we can carry on with the rest of the engine inspection. That boy. <laughs> next thing we need to do is put some anti-seize compound on the threads of the spark plug. Simple, you may say. Easy trap to fall into. We don't want any anti-seize compound closer than two threads to the bottom of the spark plug. Reason being, you don't want to transfer any of the anti-seize compound to the electrodes on the spark plug when installing them into the cylinder. This will cause a mag drop and the spark plug won't work. Don't know the words. <laughs> now that we've got all the spark plugs in, finger tight, it's time to talk them up. I should have wound it in a bit further. <laughs> Job done. Now that the oil has finished draining, it's time to put the sump plug back in and lock wire it for safety. Voila, done. Now the sump plug's back in and lock wired, it's time to move on to the engine oil filter to check for metal generation and contamination. Ooh. <laughs> One of the most important things we need to look at during a 50 hour, six monthly check is for metal generation or metal contamination in the engine oil filter. These engines have two oil filters, a suction filter in the sump and a pressure filter on the rear accessory case. This is the one we're looking at today. Very simple, four bolts, two electrical connections and she'll come off in my hand. So here we have the oil filter housing and the oil filter from the back of the engine. A quick check to see whether we've got any metallic particles. If we find any signs of metal generation or contamination, then we would investigate further. As I'm happy that we've got no metal generation in this engine, time to refit the oil filter with a new gasket and continue on with the visual inspection, completing stage one of the 50 hour check. I think I dropped the washer. Oh, bollocks, I did. Sod's law. Drop the washer. <laughs> Love my job. Just topping the engine back up with 10 quarts of engine oil, or 10 liters for metric people. Just make sure I put the bung in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that before. So 10 quarts of oil back into the engine. Some of you boffins out there might be wondering about the capacity and output of this engine. Don't forget to stay tuned for an aero sectionalist of the week. We're gonna cover this aeroplane in all its nitty gritty. It's gonna be wicked. Let's crack on and get the rest of the 50 hour check done. One of the most important things that we need to look at on this particular aircraft is the engine frame, the frame connecting the engine itself to the fuselage. Unfortunately on this aircraft, it's an area of weakness. Uh, there's a number of bulletins out on it uh, looking for cracks and any distortion in the metal, in the structure. Um, you can kind of understand when the aircraft is stressed to plus or minus 10 G, that great big lump hanging off the front definitely an area of weakness and certainly an area we need to pay particular attention to. Particular. So I've had a good look around the engine, we've cleaned the spark plugs, we've changed the oil, we've checked the oil filter, I've checked the rest of the engine for any leaks or chafing or any nasties. Next thing we need to do, move on to stage two, looking through the airframe. Here we have the seat structure, four screws holds it in place, fully carbon fiber, super lightweight, and super strong. At the moment, part of stage two of this 50 hour inspection is looking and lubing. We're looking around the airframe, looking for damage and lubing the hinges. Hinges is what I'm looking at here on these huge full length ailerons. These ailerons give this aircraft a roll rate of 450 degrees per second. One other interesting thing you might want to learn about, follow me, is these things hanging underneath the aileron. These form two purposes. One, to balance the ailerons dynamically, and two, to aid in digging into the airflow to offload the forces on the upper part of the aileron during aerobatic maneuvers. Hence, they're called spades. So the physical side of the inspection is complete. Next thing we've got to do is a ground run and leak check. Doing a ground run, make sure all our T's and P's and everything is in the green, and we want a leak check, make sure that we've got no leaks from the oil filter that we disturbed earlier. Right, let's crack on and get this done. Truth. That ground run's blown me whiskers off. Right, now that we know the T's and P's are in the green, everything's good, there's no leaks, let's crack on with the paperwork and get it released. These are the aircraft logbooks. In here is a history of all the maintenance and all the jobs that have been carried out for the life of an aircraft. They're color coded for our reference. Blue for airframe, gray for engine, and yellow for propeller. To be honest, paperwork's not the most exciting part of our job. 
the most exciting part of our job is knowing what the next video is going to be. Don't forget, stay tuned. If there's a subject you want to know about, leave me a message below. You never know, it might be in the next episode. Stay tuned, look forward to seeing you soon. So here we have the six spark plugs that we've, no it's not six, it's 12. <laughs> <laughs> oh sh I didn't put my safety glasses on. <laughs> Safety's no accident. From the cleaning, cleaning lube. <laughs> spark plug. <laughs> Watch me yeah. this one up. Yeah. <laughs> Can't find the hole. It's going on. It's been a while. We're in. Now that the oil's back in, some new. Some. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fucking born ready to wing it.